Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. This is Bhupesh. Uh, thanks for tuning in. So today, what we are doing, we'll be talking about uh, the demon set. What is the demon set? When to use? How to use? With a working example in Kubernetes world. And you know, people might get confused between demon set deployment and a stateful set. So if you have not watched my deployment versus a stateful set video, you can simply check it in the same playlist. But yeah, today we'll be talking about what is the demon set and how we can uh, use and deploy a demon set into a Kubernetes cluster. So yeah, let's get started. If you're not subscribed, my channel, you can simply subscribe it from this button and make sure that you are getting all the videos related to Kubernetes, DevOps, Grafana, and all the other monitoring aspects of it. So yeah, quick recap what we have done in this playlist so far. We have first of all understood the, uh, the Kubernetes architecture in a plain English language so that we can understand from a layman perspective, and then we discussed about what are the pod services and deployment uh, with, the, with the practical working examples. And then we took the the detailed session of deployment, what's the stateful set, why we use it, when to use it, okay, and how to use it. And finally, we talk about the RPAC, which is a very, very important concept in Kubernetes, like role, role binding, cluster role, cluster role binding. So you can watch all those videos in the same playlist. Today, we'll be talking about a demon set. So what are the practical use cases of a demon set? So normally, demon set, uh, is a is a manifest or is a component in Kubernetes which you can run specifically on nodes. So suppose my cluster is having you know three nodes. Okay, if you can see on the figure my three nodes. So so demon set will make sure that each container uh, will run on individual nodes. So you cannot have multiple pods in the same nodes as a demon set. But yeah, you can have one pod on one node with the help of that you know demon set uh, concept. Now what are the practical use cases when to deploy demon set? You know. How we will see, it, but why to use the demon set and when? So suppose you have a deployed a Spring Boot application, and you want to collect particular logs for that application, and you have five nodes on that cluster. So you'll do a cluster log collection. We will deploy a demon set that will go to each node and then capture the log for that particular application. And the other other important aspects of it is the cluster level monitoring. So suppose you want to capture all the matrices. So you will deploy. Uh, node exporter, which is a popular node exporter, as a demon set so that it can capture the node level metrics. When I say node level metrics, CPU memory for that particular node. And then there are other certain aspects of it security and compliance. You can use Kubebench to understand the security vulnerability and all those things, compliance activities, storage provisioning, running a storage plugin on every node. And then finally, the network management. This is again very important. So that you can run a network plugin or a firewall on every node to ensure that consistent network policies enforcement, like you know Calico. Right. So this is all about the theory. Let's quickly jump onto the uh, the practical implementation or the with the help of examples. So I've created a you know a GitHub page for you, so you can simply come here and then check it. So this is my page, and you can come to this demo set. Read me demo set, okay? So yeah. Let's understand it from here. So, uh, as we have understood the theory, let's understand the practical of it. So, I need to go to this folder, TD examples, and then uh, before I run this uh, demo set YAML file, but first of all, let's understand this YAML file. No, this is YAML file is simply or more or less similar to the other manifest that we have seen it earlier. So, important components are API version. Which is the the version which is being supported by this uh, kind demo set, and then the metadata, the information about your uh, application name or uh, your labels and all that. So namespace is logging, name is fluentd, and then these are the labels that we'll be using for taints and tolerations. You know later in this video, and then we have selectors, and then finally the spec uh, tolerations. We'll talk about it. Containers, and then this is the image that we are trying to spin it up. Uh, uh, on on each node, and then uh, these are the volume and volume mount with certain resources that we are keeping keeping on the pod level. So volume volume mounts uh, is fine. So <clears throat> so this is about I mean the quick understanding of a demon set basic YAML file. Now I'll go to the CD examples folder. Let me see. I am where. So I'm in PWD. So yeah, I'll. Clear the screen so that it becomes top of the, and then I'll just do a CD examples. Now I am into the examples folder. I'll do LSLTR. Now I can see the demo set YAML file, the one which was looking at. So I'll just 
simply create my namespace if it is not there. If it is there, then it will just give you a, you know, uh, error. Let's quickly run this. So this is already existing. That is fine. So I'll run this demon set example. Before I run it, let me see how many nodes are there on my cluster. So it is a mini cube single node cluster. So you'll have only one pod which will come up as a demon set on this. So let me just apply this demon set. Fine, the demon set has been created. I'll do a cube ptl get all. And just pick another window. Cube ptl get all. So I can see one demon set and one pod is successfully up and running with uh, with basic configuration. There's no other configuration type error. Perfect. So now let's see how to apply taints and toleration. What are taints and toleration? Taints and tolerations are something that what I'm saying that please schedule this pod on a particular node with particular labels. So that is the kind of thing I want to do it. So no schedule means Kubernetes scheduler. We schedule only scheduling pod that have a tolerations for the tainted nodes. So tainted node means that I'm I'm tainted means nothing but I'm tainting my node with particular uh, you know label and then I'm saying that please do not execute on that node or please schedule only on that node so with those tolerations so let's understand with the help of example let's not confuse people so let me run this taint so what i'm saying that please taint this node this is the node name with this label okay uh, with this no execute thing so let me see whether it is already tainted or not it so i'll just copy this Okay, so now this has been tainted. So let me see QPTL describe node. Let me describe this node. Now, if you describe and move up, <coughs> you see somewhere the taints information. See that this is a taint that has been associated with this node. So whatever uh, I will now run or you know, deploy that it will follow this. Uh, I would say filtration or you know policy. Fine. Now I'll apply the same demon set again. So what I'm saying that whenever this label is there, that please evict my pod, please delete that pod because I don't want any pod to be scheduled on this node with this label. No execute means uh, Kubernetes will evict the running pod from the nodes if the pods don't have tolerations for this tainted nodes. But I have not given any toleration to my pod. So this will just execute, you know, evict. So what I'll do, I'll just run this deployment again fine so i'll just do a qptl get all so let me see the label what is the label is here So we have seen that uh, the pod is up and running with this paint. Now, why this pod is running? Let me come back to the TML file. The pod is running definitely the taint. I mean, the node has been tainted that uh, no execute should be there, but we need to, we already have a toleration section. So I'm saying please tolerate this pod on this node, even if it has this label, right? So the moment I, you know, comment out this piece, the toleration will be gone now. This pod will not be tolerated by this node. Okay, let me run this deployment again. This has been configured. Let me clear the screen. AGA. Now you can see there's no pod because I've removed that toleration. So now simply that thing is working. If my node is tainted to have no execute, no execute means no pod should be executed on this node with this label and it is not happening. The moment I you know, un uncomment this piece, just try to understand this piece. Now, so now I'm saying, please tolerate this deployment or tolerate this demon set on this node, even if it has this value of uh, no execute uh, taint. Now I'm tolerating this pod, okay? So I know this is confusing, but this is really important to understand and interesting to understand. Now I've configured the demon set again, and uh, you see KGP, the pod will come up again. So this is the beauty of the taints and tolerations you know, of, of this. Now, moving further, now let's do one thing. Uh, I have, let me again show you one more thing. So let me remove the toleration and make my pod again not working, okay? 
now the the node is tainted i can see there's no pod because uh, now what i'll do i'll just remove the taints how to remove a uh, taint from the pod so you need to run the same command just minus at the end so i just run this piece now pod is untainted let me see whether see the moment i remove the taints from the node the pod is you know coming up because you have a demon set already there so this is how you can do a taint solution and remove a taint from a particular node perfect now let's see how to create a, how to run a particular pod how to run a particular pod using node selector node selector is something i am saying please run my pod on a particular node with that label so first of all i will label my pod label my node with a particular uh, you know lab, uh, sorry label my node with particular uh, label that i want so i'll just copy this and run this so my label because it is already label cube ctl get uh, describe node uh, labeling must be there already uh, uh, so uh, so label is actually type is equals to platform tool so label is there now i'll run the second uh, example of demon set so i'll come here Second example is what? Second example is do everything. The only thing I'm additionally here is instead of you know, tens and tolerance, I'm saying please run this execution on node which has this particular label. So this will pod will get attached to a particular node only. So this will not go any other node which does not have this label. So this is the beauty of node selector. So I'll come here. I'll do LSLTR clear. And then I'll do a K apply to demon set two. Okay. Now this has been configured. Now I'll just do a clear screen, do a KGP, or you can say KGP O wide. Let me do a fine. You can see the pod is up and running. And I can do a KGA also. See, this is the node selector. So what basically I've done, I will just uh, make sure. Let me change this label. Okay, one second. Now uh, let's do some magic. Now I want to make sure that this pod should not run on this node because this label will not match that particular node. Let me again run this piece. Okay, this has been configured. I'll do a KGA. See the pod the pod went away because my label now is this, but my node is having a different label. I hope you're getting it. So what we are doing, we are actually making sure that uh, this application should run on a particular node with the help of node selector. So very basic, very you know basic understanding and how we can do a taints and toleration. So these are the two very very important aspects, whether it is a deployment stateful set or daemon set. But yeah. Uh, this needs to be understand so that is that is pretty much about in this video let's quickly recap what we did we understood a demon set what are the basic real use cases in world scenario and then how we can deploy the basic demon set and then how we can apply tint and toleration and finally the node selector and there are a lot of other things that you can find it from kubernetes.io website but yeah for now just let's keep it pretty simple so yeah, if you're not subscribed and like my channel please do it right now so that you can get all the videos related to devops and Kubernetes and especially Grafana. So thanks for now. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, bye bye.